In Grand Teton National Park, there are two chapels. There's a Catholic chapel and there's an Episcopal chapel. And in the Episcopal chapel, after you have rung the bell, you walk down the path to it. And when you open the door and walk inside, if you are there for worship, you sit down and before you, behind the altar, is the scene of the mountains. The chapel is called the Chapel of Transfiguration. Because there, while you're sitting in worship, you see the glory of God. You see those mountain peaks right before you. You rest in the presence of God's holiness. In our scripture today about rest, about Sabbath, I was struck by a new book, relatively new, by Walter Brueggemann, that is called Sabbath as Resistance. So here's how I want to break it down for you. In, in Exodus, our story tells us that the Israelites were enslaved in Egypt. And their enslavement was hard. Because it was hard enough that they were already made to support the building programs going on in Egypt, making bricks day in and day out. But then the government, the pharaoh, decided it wasn't enough just to make the bricks, that they had to collect all the hay to be used to make the bricks stronger. So their day and workload expanded because now they're collecting hay, but they're also required to create more bricks. And God sent Moses to free them from that labor, from that forced labor that was wrecking their lives. It was so hard and so long that the God of Israel came along and sent Moses to free the people from that slavery. And so Moses brings them out into the wilderness and they learn about a different way of living, a different life, because the God of Israel says to them, rest is important. Stopping is important. Not laboring constantly is important. I do that. Remember the story I taught you about creation? About how I created the heavens and the cosmos, the water and the seas, the mountains and the plains, all the plants and the animals and the sea life and birds. Remember how I created everything that is. And when I got to the end of that creation, I rested. I stopped. I'm teaching you, the people of Israel, a new way to live. A new way to live in the world that doesn't demand your forced labor. That asks you to stop and rest. And then he gives them an example, right? Because he tells them, God says, you can collect as much manna as you need to feed yourselves for that day. Those who didn't believe God, who thought they still lived in the world of scarcity where everything was hard, ended up with mounds of food that was inedible. But on the day that was set aside to be quiet, to rest, to be still in the presence of God, the food lasted and filled them for more than one day. God showed them what it meant to stop and rest and be still. He showed them that there is a life that is different and necessary from the life that they had lived in Egypt. He wanted to show them a new economy, a new way of being, a new way to live in which the rhythms of life include time to stop and be still. As I was thinking about this sermon this week, 
and this idea of rest. How many of you remember those days when Sunday was a day of rest? Now for me, I'm coming at the end where things had started to change when I'm old enough to remember stuff. But I remember moving to Connecticut and being shocked that you couldn't buy liquor on Sundays. Because I'm a college student, remember. They even covered them in the grocery stores. Like they had big panels that you couldn't get in. And all the regular stores were closed. But gradually, starting in the 80s and 90s, everything started opening up on Sunday, right? Those days that my dad talks about where grandpa would take the whole brood of kids to church and then they would share a meal together and they would rest. Instead of doing all the work that you had to do on the farm, you did the necessary work that had to be done because they always had animals. You can't just skip the animals per day. But they rested. They listened to the radio, because Grandma didn't believe in television. They listened to the radio. They hung together. We've lost those days. Those days of rest. The economy that said, here is a day where everybody gets to be still. Now, everybody did exclude hospital workers and emergency personnel. But everybody else gets a time to relax and rest. And we've given that up. In some ways, we become like the Israelites. Yes, we're not enslaved. But we've become a society that demands our constant work. We are the country that is the worst at taking vacations. Did you know that? People who have jobs and on offer vacations. Now, there are millions of people who work in our country that don't have any time off. Without, If they take time off, they're not paid. But of those who are paid and can take time off, we never take the full time off that we are granted. We don't rest. I mean, a classic example of this is how we are looking at Simone Biles. She has been in the news all week, right? For the last two weeks. Because she made a decision about her health. So here's the thing about gymnasts. From 8 o'clock in the morning till late at night, they are in the gym practicing. And many of those gyms and practices push them to continue doing their gymnastics, even when they have suffered broken bones and stress injuries and fractures. They are pushed to still compete, to get up and keep going. But if you are a gymnast that is so incredible and so beyond what we have ever seen possible by any other human being, and you can't figure out where you are when you're flipping, you could land on your head and break your neck. And she couldn't figure out where she was when she was flipping. And she had the nerve to say, I can't do this right now. I can't do this. She chose her life, physically her life, really her life, over winning a gold medal. She chose rest over continuing to do what everybody is calling her to do. And I want you to think about what she would have been going through. She comes is one of the only people left from the Larry Nasser age. Meaning that she was part of the group of women and girls that were abused for year upon year. And now picture you 
being one of those women and you are at the pinnacle of where you can be at the Olympics at the site at which you experienced abuse. And like all the rest of us, she's going through COVID pandemic. Everybody's mental health is messed up. Everybody is worried about the future, worried about making the wrong choices, worried and not sleeping. We aren't sleeping as well as we used to because of the worry. And then you're asked to do your superhuman, unbelievable gymnastics that nobody else in the entire world can do. And you lose your place. And instead of deciding to break her neck, deciding to break bones, she said, I can't. And what did our country do? Some in our country are like, let her be. She's 24. She is beyond the age in which most of this stop. But she's taking time to think about herself, to rest. And others focused on what she didn't do for the team, what she didn't bring for them. Our gospel and our story today from Moses is exactly about that. It's about a story in which a people have been asked and forced to do the impossible day in and day out without rest, without stopping, without any control, until God says, this needs to stop. This needs to change. We need to change and become a different people. A people who stop and rest. Stop and believe that we don't have to exploit each other. Stop and believe another world is possible and then show us how to create that new world. Come to me, all you are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Amen.